Right. Um, Eves, the host. All right, welcome everybody to the final edition of the Business Owners Mastermind call into the quarter. No, not the final one, but you know, the end of the quarter, end of the month, and um. And so here we are, and uh, I used to do a mastermind call every month called the Clean Slate Club, and I only did this at the end of every month, the last day of every month. I'm going to relaunch it starting in April because I have a full-time business development manager starting tomorrow, and I'm just blessed because uh, I – this lady was my business development manager 19 years ago. She worked with me through a couple of different companies, and she's available. The, the daughter is now raised, 18 years old, out the door. And so this person is going to be able to take on this mastermind call that we have every week. We're going to blow this thing up to four or 500 members over the next couple of months. Uh, it's going to be incredible. Um, but we're going to relaunch the Clean Slate Club. And so – I thought what what a fitting way to end the month is give you guys kind of a preview of this type of call. And many, many years ago, I worked with um, um, a guy that said, hey, you know what? Every single day, um, you should give yourself a clean slate. His guy, This guy named was Ben Gay III. Kerry probably knows who he is. And lives up here in Placerville. Now, he was – personal friends with Napoleon Hill, the guy that wrote the book, Think and Grow Rich. And so he was a guest on a podcast of mine back in June of 2014. And it was almost like sitting in front of grandpa. Um, and I said, okay, so let me get this straight. You were personal friends with the Napoleon Hill. He goes, yeah, actually, Napoleon Hill worked for me for two years. And I go, this is a guy that wrote one of the best books on mindset ever to be released on the world. And I and so I'm like, I'm like, hey man, what's uh you know, I read the book, you know, I've gone through the book several times, but hey, what was the real secret? Like what are, what what was the stuff left out of the book? <laughs> you know? And I go, What was the best thing you ever learned from Napoleon Hill? And he said, Hey, you know what? He taught me a lot, but the number one thing he taught me is how to give myself a clean slate. And I said, okay, well, talk to me about that. He says, well, every single day you wake up, you need to realize yesterday has gone. I, I go, yeah, hold on. I get it, man. I've heard it for years in all kinds of seminars. Forget the past. Speak positive. Expect great things. But give me some how-to, dude, like practicality, how-to. And he says, okay, here's what you do. Every single day you get it. He says, you can do this anytime you want to go after a major, major goal. He said, first of all, he says, let's talk about money because that's how I use it. He goes, what you do is you decide how much money you want to make this year. Then you need to divide that by how many days you're going to actually work. And that's how much money you need to make on a daily basis. He says, so here's the here's here's the step by step. Every single morning, John, what I want you to do is I want you to get up. I want you to whip out a blank sheet of paper. I want you to write at the top of the page, clean slate, and put the date. Then I want you to write down that daily number. So if it's thousand dollars today, five hundred dollars a day, whatever that number is, I want you to write that number down. Then what you got to do? He says, you don't need a seminar for this. You don't need to read a book. You don't need to do any of this. Our brains are designed to answer any question we ask it. So I want you to sit there and I want you to say, okay, I've got to earn $1,000 today. What can I do to earn $1,000 today? He said, just write, just write those things down. He says, then what I want you to do is I want you to look at your calendar, and any appointment that is on that calendar or anything you got scheduled on that calendar that does not help you hit that goal, I want you to reschedule it okay, if you can and then I want you to populate in that calendar everything that you wrote down that you got to do today. And at the end of the day, the numbers are what the numbers are. I said, okay, I got that down. He goes, here's the magic. 
let's say you go in for a thousand bucks and you come in at eight hundred and fifty. So you write down eight fifty. But here's the key. Tomorrow, when you start that process again, you're not allowed to carry over the hundred and fifty from yesterday. It's a thousand tomorrow. He said about two or three weeks into that exercise, your brain, the universe, everything you do is going to start laser focusing on hitting that number, and all of a sudden you're going to start hitting that number. He goes, dude, I did that when I wanted to hit 250,000, when I hit 500,000, when I hit a million. He said, that's how I got to where I'm at. I'm like, okay, so I'll try it out, and sure enough, it works. And then what really was the first test was my client, and if you go to YouTube and look up Clean Slate, it's it's, uh, it's it, actually it's now come to find out my almost my number one performing YouTube video. And so my client Stephanie Scheller comes to me on February 9th, 2015, and she goes, "I'm not gonna make it again." She was trying to hit ten thousand dollars a month in income, and she goes, "It's just it's just not gonna happen." And I'm like, well, "What are you talking about? I, it's only the 9th of February." And she goes, "Yeah, but I look at all the all the." Stuff I already got closed, the stuff that's in my pipeline and everything. I said, we're going to clean slate this. So I gave her this assignment. We reverse engineered it, and the new income she had to produce to hit that number, we had, I think, 12 days left in the month uh, that she was going to work, and, and it came out to be $375 a day. And I said, well, what, Steph, why don't we just go for 500 a day? What, what, what do you think? Would you be okay with that? And she goes, Yes. And so I said, okay, so this is this is the exercise. You got to write it down. So she wrote it down. She I said, you got to send me a text at the end of the day what the result was. So the first day she hit 750. Next day she hit uh, what 1250. Within five business days she had already surpassed 10 grand. And and she goes, I did it. Oh my God, I did it. And I go, great. You still have, you know, seven uh, to 10 days left. You know what? I got to continue to do this. I go, yeah, you're going to continue to do this the rest of the month. She came in at 14 grand that month, taught her a big lesson. Okay. And that is when you get what you focus on. And so here we are. We're at the end of March. And it's the last day of the month. And we, let's just, let's just say we're going to treat this like one quarter. Okay. Now you could do this. Every week, you can do this every month. You can do this anytime you're feeling down and out and you want to get re-motivated. This works every single time. And so what I want to teach you today, and then we're going to open it up for live Q&A, is a, is a strategy called baseline strategy. And I didn't even have a name for this strategy. Uh, I had been taught this in 1992 by a, name, a guy named Clark Broom. And he said, if you do this, you will never have stock market results. He said, if you do this, you'll have results that look like this. Just go like that. And he says, so here's what you do, and, and this is what I want you to do, is I want you to look at, okay, write down the results. What were the results for the first quarter here? Now, you still got, what, uh, eight, seven hours and um, 50 minutes left. So the 31st of March is not over until 11.50, when it goes from 11.59 until midnight. That's when that's when your first quarter goals are officially done. By the way, okay, the, you the time ran out, and so whatever decide the time you decide to end today, I want you to go back and look at the results. Let's pick money as the baseline because you could do this with fitness, health, finances, family, whatever it is you want to see improvement. You want to run this baseline strategy on, and so let's just talk about money. So I want you to write down what is the result of the first three months. How much money did you make in this first three months of this year? The next thing I want you to do, which is also a part of your baseline, so the baseline is whatever that number is. What's also included in that baseline is every single thing that you did to hit that number, the number of appointments you ran, the number of proposals you put out, uh, the number of sales you made, the number of new clients you got, uh, all of that, whatever you did to hit that number, I want you to write it down. Go back and think, okay, how did I get that client? How did I get that client? What did I do to do that? What did I do to accomplish that? You know, this big sale, like I had a client of mine yesterday. Uh, we've been together now six years, okay? And 
she calls me out. We were on a, on a, on a, on a call. And when we first started working together in December 22nd of 2015, she was like, man, if I could just – brand new business, brand new business on right? She's like, if I could just make five grand a month, that, that would be nirvana for me. And yesterday she's like, yeah, I closed a $75,000 deal this morning. Um, I'm like, that's great. So 50% up front? She goes, no, I, I, I have them pay the whole thing up front. I'm like, do you realize what we're talking about here? Like six years ago we were talking about five grand. And now you're like, oh yeah, we did a hundred grand, yeah, oh, okay, great. So you grow into it, right? And so one of the things is write down your baseline, everything that's included. And now here's the strategy, okay? Go back and look at that, okay? What did I do? And then I want to add. Uh, there's three things you get to do here. Number one, okay? What is one thing? One thing, not twenty things, not fifty things. One thing. What is one thing? That you can add to your baseline over this next quarter that if you added it would dramatically increase the result of what you did in the first quarter. Because here's the strategy. We're going to continue to do what you did in the first quarter to hit that result. Then we're going to add one thing to that baseline. Maybe it's a referral system. Maybe it's a new employee. Like in my case, I'm adding a new employee. Okay, And that one key hire is going to more than triple my result in the, in the second quarter. So that's the one thing. The second thing is look at the strategies that you used in the first quarter, and some of them may need to be modified or improved. And that's where you get together with a mentor that has been where you want to go, whether they're paid or not, and say, hey, man, what, you know, how can it help me tweak this? Maybe my marketing campaign didn't work. Maybe this needs to be tweaked or modified. The third thing is there are certain strategies you didn't execute on. There are certain strategies that just did not work. Well, stop doing them. Subtract them, eliminate them. Okay. Now you got your plan for the first quarter or the second quarter. And if you just focus on, see, a, a strategy takes about 90 days to really take effect. That's why when I work with a client, man, we work with, with, uh, together a minimum of 90 days because it takes about 90 days to get shit done, you know? And so, Go into this quarter with your baseline strategy. I promise you this. If you if you do this before midnight tonight, okay, this is the key to clean slate. This is a key, the key to high achievers. Don't let the sun go down without closing out this quarter and setting yourself up for the next quarter before you go to bed. So that way you go into this next quarter tomorrow with a clean slate and a very definite plan on what you're going to go do. And I promise you, if you do this consistently for the rest of your business life, your results are going to go from here. Let me see if we get this on this. They're going to go from here, and they're going to consistently go up, 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 up. And the moment you stop it, you're going to plateau. And if you don't change it, it's going to go down. That's just business. Okay. And so with that said, Let's open it up. Anybody got any questions? Anybody need any clarification on what I just talked about? This is a Q&A call, okay? So ask whatever. If you have a business challenge, opportunity you want to mastermind on, we got some incredible talent on today's call that can help you with your biggest business problem, challenge, or opportunity. So I'm going to open it up, raise your hand, either go like this. If you don't know how to do the Zoom hand, and I'll unmute you. Uh, but before we do that, I want to introduce my co-host, Alan Reeves, and see if Alan's got any feedback before we open it up. Good afternoon, everybody. Thank you for joining us. Um, all good stuff, John. And um, that's one thing That's one thing about business. Uh, when you talk about growing into it, there are, there are many of us that start, I mean, you've got to start somewhere. And then you want to set definitive goals, but I remember very vividly. I remember extraordinarily vividly comparing this day to a day in my past. Last night and yesterday here in middle Tennessee, we had some very severe weather, no tornadoes, but it, it knocked some trees down standard stuff. We could not work from our office yesterday because transformers were blowing so often around us that the internet was unstable. So, Today, you know, it was colder air, aftermath of it, fairly pleasant day, but we were dealing with a lot of client issues, technology issues that were caused by the weather. 
And I was catapulted back in time to 2004, 2005, not long after I'd opened my first office. And back then, people used dial-up modems. People, you, you know, the, you'd hear the AOL tones, you're connecting, and then you've got mail and all that kind of good stuff. Broadband was out there, but it wasn't ubiquitous the way it is now. And every time weather came through like that, we get 10, 12, 15 calls. Hey, my, I can't connect to the internet because lightning would hit their modem and blow it up. They were notorious. They're cheap pieces of junk in desktop computers, and we would replace those modems. And I remember one day we made $900 replacing modems. And I, I just did some quick math in my head. And I'm like, God, you know, if it stormed every day, we'd be in great shape. But that's a terrible thing to wish for. So what do I do to kind of get to a place where I can build revenue that we can count on rather than having to rely on acts of God? And that was a long journey uh, that really, uh, and John, I'm plugging you here, but that was a long journey that really, after, after about a decade of fits and starts, it really, really took shape after uh, we engaged with John and John simplified the whole concept down. For, for years, I'd been making it too complicated. And John basically said, here's what, here's what you can offer. And boy, you know, when we, when we offloaded it, it just went. And sometimes, you know, sometimes you just need a perspective. Sometimes you need a nudge. Sometimes you need some self-motivation. Sometimes you might find it in a book. You might find it in a mentor. You might find it in a friend. You might find it in adversity, it, it, you, but you've got to keep your eyes open because whatever happens to you is an opportunity and it's all, it's all mindset. And I'll leave it at that. Thank you, John. Awesome. So, um, I mean, you hit the nail on the head. I was talking to, um, um, construction company that got referred to me and talking to the owner of the company has been around for 36 years and they're like hey we're sick and tired of being the under the thumb of the general contractor and we we just don't know how to create our own leads you know and you know, we're sick and tired of waiting and, you know, we're, we're, we're busy, then we're not busy, then we're busy, then we're not busy. And so here they are, they reach out. Uh, actually, Allie found them on Facebook, posting something on Facebook, which has become a gold mine, by the way, of these next doors on Facebook and Facebook neighborhoods. It's like gold mine. And so um, reached out to them and, and again, clean slate. They just need to continue to do what they've been doing. But now they're going to add and modify and subtract some things to their baseline, and they're going to end up seeing a better result. And so business is one of those things where once you find uh, what works, Tony Robbins is famous for saying, once you find a pony that rides, you ride that pony until that pony doesn't ride no more. And and so – but you get that. And so I was talking to him, I'm like, I'm like – my seventh company and every single one of those companies i worked with a mentor i paid a mentor to help me get there a lot quicker uh you can go there on your own like i tried it a couple of times and it sucks because it's a long road but the business i have right now i got I, I was just like what's wrong with me i got stuck and finally i steve napleton was like i'm gonna give you a strategy session for free dude you gotta stop canceling on me <laughs> <laughs> and I'm like, and then he goes, he goes, why do you keep dancing on me? I'm like, here's why. I didn't want the accountability. That's it. It wasn't like he was going to teach me anything new, although he did. But I didn't want to have to answer to somebody every week because I wasn't ready to go out and do the work. And and finally, May 17th, Alan, you were a client of mine back then, May 17th, 2015. I finally said, okay, because I knew I was going to hire the dude. I just knew it. I just, I was like, I already, I like the guy. He's already got a two and a half million dollar consulting company. I'm like, I want to be where he's at. And I canceled three months in a row on the dude. And finally I go, 
okay, all right, I'm ready to actually do the work. Because I already know he's just going to tell me to do a bunch of damn work that I don't want to go do. You know? And he's going to hold me accountable to it, which really just makes me I don't I I I, I like playing golf. I don't want to go and work right now. Okay? And the rest is history. And so you know, he ended up blowing my business up and it was fun. But if uh if you don't have somebody, if you're listening to the recording, it doesn't have to be me. I don't care if it's me or not. I mean, there's plenty, I've trained, I don't know, 185 coaches now. You know, go find somebody. You know, find somebody if anything, to hold your butt accountable because the challenge with being business owners like we are, it's easy not to go do it, right? It's like Jim Rohn said, it's like you're supposed to eat an apple a day, and it's been scientifically proven to work. But why don't people do it? Because it's easy not to do it. But I guarantee if you had somebody say it, calling you up every day, hey, did you eat your apple today? You'd probably be consistent with it. You know, and you'll probably live a lot longer. And it's the same principle here. So, uh, anybody, um, let's just open Q and A today, you guys. We were, this is the fifth um, Thursday of the month. I uh, thought I'd share some golden nuggets with you. But who has? Who wants to uh, share great news that happened in the first quarter? You got something? Maybe you want to strategize on going into the next quarter? Raise your hand. Ladies and gentlemen, let me introduce you to Ruth Mudd, my new partner is starting tomorrow. That's right. Woo! Business Development Manager extraordinaire. Very lucky to have you back. So um, anybody got any questions? Anybody got any business challenges? Anything that you learned this quarter that was kind of an aha moment for you that maybe you can share? That would help somebody else out. Carrie, you're unmuted. You sound like you got something to say. Well, I was going to say two things. Um, one, just, I mean, this is just a reminder. Everybody knows this, but honestly, to remember that the numbers don't lie, only people do. And who do we lie to most? Right. We lie to ourselves because we're really good at it. So, um, I'm not a, I, I have uh, hidden from the numbers on occasion myself. And so it's just a great reminder to go because the numbers don't tell you anything except what, what your next move should be. That's all it tells you. It, it either worked, it only worked sort of, or it didn't work at all. And uh, that means we have to change what we're doing. The other thing I was going to say that's really helped me is finally um, getting a strategic partner webinar together. And we're doing it once a week and inviting um, all kinds of different, I mean, so the list of possible strategic partners for us is huge. So we are inviting everybody for that 30 minutes and it is resulting in uh, some fantastic partnerships. And some people are just saying, hey, I don't wanna be a partner, but I think I personally need to know about this. So. Remember to do what you've been, said all along, uh, you know, what you've said too, is get, do it in groups. Stop doing it one-to-one, -one, do it in groups. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I mean, if you do nothing, this is a, for all of you know it because you're here, but for a lot of you that listen to the recording or uh, watch it on YouTube, it's like there is a tremendous amount of value in just showing up here on Thursday, 4 p.m. Pacific. You can count on this thing happening so God takes me home. You know, I enjoy this. The thing I enjoy the most about this is I get to associate with people like you. You know, and association is one of the big keys for success. You know, you're a result of the top five people you hang out with. And that's been a saying since the beginning of time, but it's true. Association is there. You want to be a bank robber? Go hang out with bank robbers. You know, you want to be successful? Go out and hang out with successful people. Alex is in commercial insurance. You want to be a successful in commercial insurance? Find the most successful commercial insurance people that you have. He happens to be a part of the tip, so there's some massively successful insurance people nationwide. You guys can form your own little tight little mastermind group. You know, you guys have ideas. You know, and um, I just learn. Um, um, let me let me kind of preface this story here because this is this 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 tells a story right here. I went down to 
Lincoln um, to get some antifreeze from an auto parts store. And I'm going to change the guy's name, guy named Joe. It's not his real name. But Joe and I met when I was 12 years old. His father owned an auto parts store. Okay? And Joe's eight years older than me. And about 14 years old, we started doing some partying together. Started doing some illegal drugs together, like some heavy illegal drugs together. And by the time I was 17 and a half, full-blown drug addict, his dad ended up paying for the treatment facility that got me cleaned up, July 21st, 1987. And so he grew up, San Ramon, you know, dad very, very well off, great neighborhood, great upbringing, but yet here we are, same same position point in time. I clean up and I go off this route and and I take Gary's advice, which is keep your nose clean. Like literally, John, keep your nose clean. <laughs> okay. Uh, you know, go back to school and become you know, do your work your butt off to become successful when you're in a position to help people help people. And that's what I spent the last thirty something years of my life doing. This guy ends up in prison for five and a half years uh, because of drugs and loses everything. B buys the business from his dad, loses it all. Okay, Now back working in an auto parts store, selling auto parts. Now, I'm not knocking that. I'm just saying the choices we make have nothing to do our, with our upbringing, have nothing to do with where we've come from. I was on the streets of East Oakland. Okay. So I have nothing to do with – everything has to do with the choices we make going forward. And today is March 31st, 2022. It's the end of the quarter. You can't go back and change anything that happened in the past and in the last three months. But you can make a decision today that from this point forward, I'm going to go this route. And I'm going to find somebody who's already been successful on that route, and I'm going to follow them, and I'm going to go do what they've done. You know? And it'll change the rest of your life. I literally came back just now from a cigar store, cigar shop, sitting there smoking a cigar. This guy is 78 years old, okay, 78 years old, got pancreatic cancer. And we're sitting there talking. He's retired, and we're sitting there talking. He's talking to me about his goals. He's talking about, man, I'm, I got this I'm going to go do. I got this I'm going to go do. I'm going to win. I want to get this certain certification in fly fishing. And, and I'm like, this guy, it's a difference in mindset. Now, he knows. He's already said, hey, man, it, it already went through the bone. It's already in the blood. It's like, I'm going to die. Okay? But you would never know talking to the guy. Had he not actually said that, I would have never known because of the words that were coming out of his mouth. It's like, we're going to go do this. We're going to go do this. We're going to go do this. We're going to do this. I'm like, dude, you're, you're, like the, you're like the best conversation I've had all week, man. It's like you're just reminding me. It's like it's over when it's over. <laughs> you know? Until then. You have potential inside you to go anywhere you want. And and so I was fired up leaving there. I was like, you know, and so I wanted to share that story with you because, you know, whether you're on this live call or you're listening to the recording, it's like, hey, stop beating yourself up. You know, the biggest terrorist in your entire life, you're, the biggest terrorist in, the, in your entire world, in this entire planet is right here between these two years. So I give you permission to stop terrorizing yourself, forgive yourself, uh, celebrate everything that you've done or haven't done or all the mistakes that you've made to get to this point in life because you wouldn't be who you are had you not gone through that. But say, hey, man, today I'm making a decision. I'm going this route, and it may be the route you're on right now. Totally fine. You get to decide. You know. But I tell you this. You show up here every week, Alan and I are going to bring it. The people that are showing up here consistently, we're going to bring our best. We want to grow, and we want we want to be different this time next week than we are today. And so it's a team locking arms, and that's how we go forward. Who else? I'm going to start calling on people, man. I'm going to call on, on, on Rudy here. 
Rudy, I'm just I'm going to rename you from Patty to Rudy here because that, that's not your name. We don't want people thinking your name is Patty. Unmute yourself, man. What's up, everybody? How you guys doing? Marvelous, marvelous. <laughs> awesome, awesome. Hello, John. Bring us some news, man. Tell us about your week, man. Tell us about your quarter. Uh, um, the, well, we're not what we were when we first started, so that's a good thing. And we got a basic idea of where we're going. But um, I don't know that I never paid attention to the quarters or all that stuff until now. And I didn't realize it was ending today. So I'm going to set some goals for the next quarter coming up. Definitely. Exciting, man. So what motivates you? My wife. My wife and my kids and my grandkids motivates me. That's what everything... My wife and I have been together for 31 years. We've been married going on 29 years. Thank you. Thank you. Congratulations, ma'am. Yep. And that's been my driving force. I was a mess up when I was younger. You know, just same story like you. So if I didn't, I didn't even make it into high school. <laughs> I did the eighth grade twice. <laughs> that was it. Yes, Duvo. I was done. But um, my wife totally changed my mind, um, my life, that's for sure, to help with God. And uh, my kids really changed me around a lot. And, but I still went through issues for a long time from drinking. Yep. Drinking and all that stuff. Luckily, my wife stayed with me. <laughs> <laughs> Thank God for that. That's for sure. But, yeah, we're not where we were, and, you know, we've been in business 22 years with, and, you know, you, you say we're doing well because of where we are and we made it this far, but it feels like we're just spinning our wheels, you know, and uh, trying to get those wheels on track, and that's why we went with you, and we're believing I know we're already like a halfway, a month and a half, and I'm like, man, we we need so much to do. So much stuff still to do. It's kind of hard to make time. Definitely. No, it's been a pleasure, man. I've, I've watched you guys grow and um, and have that dream just be refiltered back in your in your life, the smile, you know, and the excitement, and and now it's just the work, right? just like going down that path and doing the actual work and um you know it's it's i the biggest pleasure i get is watching you guys actually take action on that work and becoming the the, the people god designed you to be you know and and you know we all have greatness in us doesn't matter where we are and sometimes we need we need to know what to go do like you know i mean we can only get so far on our own and and having people in our lives like the people here, you know, people that you work with one on one to say, hey, you know, I know you're going down this path, but hey, man, there's a better road right here, you know, and here here's the detour, and and all of a sudden you go, man, the only thing I was missing was an idea, you know, a skill set, um, somebody to believe in me, you know, and you and I have the reason I love so much working with you, you and I have. Very similar dark paths, but none of that has Definitely. happened. I mean, you've been in business 22 years, and and to see where you guys are going is just it's it's, it's a tremendous blessing, absolutely tremendous blessing. Awesome. You know? Thank um, you for working with us. Definitely, it's exciting. Maggie. Yep. Yo. Yo, Maggie. Maggie. Hey, hey, hey! You don't, you don't, you don't. Uh, you, you don't keep your mute button open without being called on here. Oh, <laughs> so, well, I finally so, finished so. doing what I was doing. So, <laughs> hello. <laughs> so what? Um, so, yes, yes, Sir John. So tell, us, tell, tell us what you do. Tell us what you do. Oh, 
I, I, I need an elevator speech. <laughs> I insure your assets. There you go. We have farmers insurance. I've been insurance uh, with farmers uh, since 1996. And I have an awesome staff. We don't close for lunch. And we are, we answer the phone like by the third ring, doesn't, you don't have to push anything. And that's uh, where old fashioned service never gets old. So that's what I do for a living. I, I um, love that tagline. I've always loved that tagline. <laughs> and, yeah. and things weren't going so great in October when you called me and now things are awesome again. And I'm so excited. I, um, I've always been afraid of public speaking. And as of two weeks ago, I think Rudy was there. I gave a speech at the Board of Realtors. And um, ever since then, I am speaking all over the place. And it's not that I have like the best grammar, whatever. I do if I write it down first, but my vernacular is from O-Town, all of hers. Yes, it is. Uh, and I've been listening to Audible has been my friend. You got me started in uh, going to meetings where I have to speak, which terrified me. So I started listening to um, different Audible books, uh, Mel Robbins, The Five Second Rule, I listened to part of hers on the way to give that speech. Uh, and it just, that combined with Into the Magic Shop by James Doty, uh, those two things have helped me to just do it basically and to be able to uh, calm myself down in an instant. That's it, That's now awesome. I can share That's my awesome. voice. So let me ask you a question. What what was your biggest win in the first three months of this year, in this first quarter? I am writing, well, okay, so I I had I laid off my person who did life insurance and that forced me to do life insurance. And I'm writing more life insurance than I've ever written. And that's like there are PNC people on the call, they know that. PNC people don't like to do life insurance. I, I'm loving it. I'm finally helping people get what they need instead of what I'm trying to just, you know, hawk. This is actually, uh, I'm helping them with the IULs or if they have to go term, whatever for now, but uh, helping them to invest for the future and cover their families. Heidi, what's the biggest lesson you learned? In the first quarter pay attention and go to work <laughs> <laughs> love it love it love it love it love it so well thanks for being here really appreciate you for sure you're welcome and thank you just like rudy said thank you john <laughs> andrew Hi, everyone. Um, I, I'm Andrew Marash. I'm a financial advisor. And I would say that, um, well, just to answer the question of what motivates me, um, I do financial planning. And if you ever like ever get hooked on a puzzle or anything like that, where you just keep going, you can't stop. That's what financial planning is like for me. And what motivates me is solving these puzzles. And everyone's different. Every, every client that comes to me has a different situation. And my goal is to, you know, help them get closer to their goals in, in whatever way I can. And um, it's very satisfying knowing that everybody is taken care of. I mean, I think that's my biggest thing is the, the most uncomfortable thing for me is knowing I've got things out there that, you know, are uh, knowing I've got things out there that I haven't taken care of. And uh so with financial planning and so it's like a puzzle solving job, it's kind of fun. And, and um, um, it's like, it's like once I get going on something, I can't stop. It's just kind of addicting for me. And um, one of the things that 
has kind of helped lately is that, you know, and John's talked about this before. I, I talked to him before. And one is the thing about asking clients for referrals. You know, it's not something I was really doing. And, um, you know, if you do a good job for them, it's, a, it's amazing how easy it is. And so I just kind of started focusing more on asking my clients for referrals. And, uh, you know, I mean, it works. I'd have to say that's the biggest thing, but you do have to take good care of them because then uh, obviously, you know, it's harder to ask. But when you take care of them, it's it's very, very easy thing to do. And um, I guess that's pretty much all I have to say about that. <laughs> Forrest Gump's. Forrest Gump. Uh... That's, all, that's all I have to say about that. <laughs> <laughs> that's all I have to say what, about uh, that. What was your... Uh... <laughs> What was your biggest win in the last three months? Well, I'd say that, you know, I've always heard, you know, as long as I've been in this career, they always say, you know, find yourself a niche. And it was nothing, it was something that I just could never figure out, you know? And um, then it just happened that um, I got um, uh, a client was referred to me that's a nurse. And, um, I did a financial plan for them and, um, you know, it's crazy, but, you know, I learned a lot about it, but, you know, all of a sudden start getting all these nurse nurses, uh, because, you know, she referred me and, and then it just, apparently they, they talk a lot amongst each other. And, um, so I think the biggest success was really finding a niche and where, you know, I can have a, a regular source of, of prospects come. And uh, that's that's the biggest thing over the last few months, I would say. And the beauty of it is that the beauty of it is here's the beauty of it. They have 403 B's, you know, they have their retirement plans at work. They have an option on their plan to um, add an advisor. So they don't have to quit. You know, a lot of time for for retirement plans, typically people, you know, they they either retire and then they roll their money over to you and you don't get it until they retire. The beauty of this is that they can still be working and I can still manage their retirement plan for them. So it's, it's, it's pretty, that's a pretty big one for me. Awesome. What's the biggest lesson that you learned over the last three months? Um, biggest lesson. Uh, you, you have to be talking to people. You have to pick up the phone. You have to be you know, out there, you have to be out there and you have to be communicating. And then it's like, who, uh, let me see here. Oh, Maggie, Maggie said, I tend to, I'm not like a big uh, public speaker either. So I, I wrote down the names of those book, of those audio books you, you mentioned, but, but uh, I'm not like the biggest at that, but you know, it's worth getting good at, at things like that. You know, it's good at working on your communication skills and being able to express your ideas clearly and succinctly and, and so that people understand it. Because, you know, if you hesitate, they just think that you don't really know that much and it doesn't give them, it doesn't inspire confidence, you know, to the client as well. Um, they're much quicker to hire you if you can explain everything clearly. And I'm good at one on one, but I was never that great in groups. So the lesson is communication for sure. Awesome. Awesome. Well, thanks for sharing. Alex. Good afternoon, everyone. How are you guys doing? Marvelous, man. How about yourself? Marvelous, marvelous. So, what's motivating me? Um, I just want to work my butt off right now for like the next. 10 to 15 years. I'm not, not saying that I'm going to retire early, but I just want to have the option for my wife and I not to work as hard when, you know, we are middle-aged. I mean, I'm 29 right now. Um, I want to, you know, have the freedom when I'm 50 to go on vacation for a week or two, if I like. And uh, that's what's been motivating me recently or kind of motivating me to get into sales to begin with. Awesome. What's the uh, biggest win in the last three months? Biggest win. So it was a construction company that I cold called um, that didn't have any comp. I was actually cold calling them for a few months. Um, I had a meeting with them before the new year and I was just dripping on them, dripping on them. 
And uh, they were like, you know, we're gonna, we'll move forward when we're ready. I kept sending them kind of the info that I'll need, uh, but they just weren't budging until they called me one day with an emergency saying the CSLV is gonna shut down one of their projects if they don't show proof of workers comp. So they needed it today, you know, and the way most agencies work, it's not Geico, especially for a company this big with this many moving parts that's never had workers comp with this many employees, it was a pretty big mess, um, but I was able to get them a couple options, one of which was a lot more expensive, but it came with payroll, HR, and all that, but they didn't want the PEO, so I was able to uh, secure them much cheaper, save them 10 grand compared to that option, and uh, the CEO was super grateful after everything was said and done. He called me one night, and he was like, man, I really appreciate the work you did. You, got, you saved us a ton. We're able to stay on this job, and uh, it was just the the first time where a sale where I felt the gratitude through a sale you know it was always good to see the the commission or whatever but this was the first time where um I felt you know like where he was really truly thankful awesome that's a it's a big joy when you go to help a client in an emergency situation and you solve their problem and they call you up and they show you, uh, you know, it wasn't about, you know, making a commission or any of that stuff. It's about helping them solve a problem. And that's what we do as business owners. We solve problems. We get, it's like my mentor Cardone has told me over and over again, it's like you get, you will be paid in, the, in direct proportion to the size of problem that you solve. And if you just, you know, get to know your clients, uh, you know, whether it's your service that solves their problem or somebody else's service that solves their problem. Our job is to solve problems as business owners. That's our job. And as long as we focus on, okay, Mr. or Mrs. Client, um, you know, what problems do you have? You know, how can I help you solve those problems? You know, they're never going to stop as long as you own a business, you know. Um, and so what's your, uh, what's the biggest lesson that you learned in the last three months? Um I have a couple. I have a couple. Let me piggyback on that. What you just said. Uh, actually, hang on. I think I just lost my train of thought. Either way, the lesson: don't answer the phone if you're not ready for the call. Um, I had a call. Uh, you know, it was a, it was a red hot lead. I definitely could have converted it if I was prepared, um, but I answered it, and you know, I got my teeth kicked in basically. So that was a good lesson. Um, dang it! I had another thought. I just completely missed it, but it'll come back to me. But uh, yeah, don't answer the phone if I'm not ready. Awesome, thank you. Uh, let's see here, uh, Ruth. Have to unmute yourself. There, oh. there, finally Try did again. it. There you go. <laughs> okay. All right, what, what motivates you? Oh, well, my motivation is knowing that I've helped somebody. I mean, that's amazing to me, knowing that I've you know, gotten out there, done something that made somebody's day. Uh, that is a huge, I, I can't even tell you how much that's a huge motivator for me, knowing that I found somebody the right house, knowing that I've gotten them, you know, what, what after all this time, they've been waiting, they finally got it. Ah, there's just nothing better than that. Um, I also motivated by showing my daughter that a woman can be very successful and not uh, ever doubting herself. That is a huge motivator for me. That is an enormous motiva motivator. And uh, so I've got to say that that's what moves me every day. And uh, you talk about uh, my biggest win. And that was calling you back, John. <laughs> not, <laughs> not, uh, not um, looking at that call saying, oh gosh, you know, what I'm got to figure out what, what's, what's he, what's he looking for? I know I've worked for him. He's a great guy. Um, okay. So I finally call hey, him say back. That part, say, say, awesome. say, say that part again. Which one? <laughs> that you're awesome. The, the great guy, the great guy part. You are, you're a great guy. You're super, <laughs> I, I, you're super motivated. You, you always are successful at everything you touch. And uh, I just wasn't sure that I had the space in my, t in my schedule to, to work something else in. And then I talked to you and I was just, just blown away. So that was my biggest win. I'm glad I 
called you back. That was definitely the thing that, <laughs> that I chalk up to number one. So. As you say, Ruth, Ruth and I worked together back in 2000, 2001, two and three. And I mean, unbelievable. It's like, it's a, it's a it's a definite example. It's like when you when you have a rock star that works with you, um, and that's how I look at it. Is you know whether they're your employees or whatever. It's like when they work, they're a team member. They're they're a part of that team. And you know, um, I've learned. I'm a whole lot different, Ruth, by the way, than I was back then. I was a jerk back then, but <laughs> but uh, you know, I'm excited about that because we worked in the IT space and and Ruth made me look really, really good uh, from a marketing standpoint, a promotional standpoint, and allowed me to go out and do what I love to do, which is meet with clients and help them out. And dramatically different now, this is a whole different business model where all we do is help people. That's it. Every single day when we wake up, it's like, how many people are we going to help today? And um, and it doesn't matter what business you're in. You can be in a consulting business. You can do Carrie's business, Alex's business, Andrew's business, Alan's business, Maggie's business, Robbie's business. You know, if we just focus on, okay, who can I help today? You know, our businesses are always going to grow. Because you want to make a million bucks, help a million people. You know, want to make a billion? Help a billion, you know. And so I'm super excited uh, that we're going to be working together again. And, and so what was the biggest lesson? that you learned over the last three months? I'm talking to you, Ruth. Are you still there? Everybody hear me? She she dropped. Oh, she dropped. Room. Just at the right time. <laughs> yeah. Great segue. All right. All right. Great segue. Carrie. Biggest win? What are you motivated about? And biggest lesson? Well, I think I said one of my biggest reminders anyway, if not lesson, just to be reminded that um, leveraging my time makes all the difference in the world. And sometimes I get caught up in serving one-to-one -one and forget that. So that's one. Um, I'm right now motivated by the new partners because I want to make sure that they feel successful, that they can, um, even if it's just a referral, uh, a partner, or it is um, further up the food chain, somebody that's coming on the agency, um, I'm motivated by making sure that they feel equipped to do what they need to do and express how, you know, what we work with. And I'm working with some, some new introductions and new ways to express what we do rather than the same old way. So that's fun. Uh, what about lessons? Hmm. Biggest lesson. Well, it was more of a personal lesson. Um, the last few years have been really challenging because we were doing caregiving here for someone. And I didn't realize how much my brain was really mostly in the other room worrying about them uh, a good friend that Mark and I invited in to live with us, you know, that anyway, I didn't um, realize that or give credence to the fact that that was taking my brain and my energy away and not learning to compartmentalize. I didn't do that. And if I ever found myself in that situation again, I would really think about how to compartmentalize my business and, and my whatever my responsibilities are. That's always tough. It's like, um, you know, I've been, and you've been in business for a long time. Um, it's everything goes smooth, everything just going great, and all of a sudden a storm hits. You know, and and if you um, <clears throat> if you go up uh, and look at my YouTube channel, the, I can't believe it. The number one performing video right now is buffaloes versus cows. And it's a talk I did with Placer County Association of Realtors and it's how those two animals deal with the storms. And, you know, the cows try to outrun the storm and run away from the storm. And buffaloes head directly into the storm as fast and as hard as they can so they can get through it quickly. And because we can't stop the storms coming, um, it's our attitude and how we deal with them 
but you hit you hit the nail on the head, especially as a business owner. It's way different as a as a business owner versus being an employee, and that is, you know, I can't fall apart. You know, if I don't have leverage in my business, if I don't have uh, things in my business that allow me to weather a storm, then I have to be in the storm and keep my business afloat. Otherwise, the whole house falls apart. And and so what I tell businesses, it's like, hey, you know, get to a million as quickly as you can, and then you're in a very, 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 very dangerous ground when you hit that million dollars. You have to get it to five as quickly as possible because you're now big enough to be sued, and there is stuff to go after, uh, and you typically have employees, and one mistake, one mistake, man, by one of those employees could cost you everything. Alex can speak 100% to this. It's like – I had this happen in 2011 where I parted ways with my business partner, and I had 11 employees, and um, you know one of the guys' name was Jonathan, and he was on a big-time project at the, at the time, and I didn't know that he was a mole for my ex-business partner. And so I finally had to fire everybody, and – but – I had to hand off his project to a senior level engineer that I had hired and he assured, yeah, hey, did you back up this server? Yeah, no, it's completely backed up. Everything is protected. Are you sure? Yeah. Have you verified it? Yeah, yeah, no problem. Because I'm about to wipe this server out and turn it into a terminal server. Now that's a little bit technical, but bottom line is we're gonna wipe out their main data server and turn it into a whole different type of server. So we had to make sure the backup was there and sure enough, he wiped it. We built it, project, everything's going great. Two weeks later, can't find these files, can't find these files, can't find – they lost seven years of a client's, of client's data. They were the number one uh, marketing company in Sacramento. They had, they had the Kings. They had a bunch of big clients, man. Oh, my God. Um, they had to hire, what, five full-time temps for three months. They lost – I think they lost seven long-term clients, got sued for $390,000. The only thing that saved my butt is I had E&O insurance because okay? I had a good commercial insurance guy back then. And he told me, oh, here's your E&O insurance policy. I'm like, that is expensive. I am not paying that. Trust me, you need to pay this. I'm like, okay. So I went out and found a client to pay for it. And Oh my God, that five thousand dollar deductible, which is all I had to pay, saved my butt. Ruined my reputation, but saved my butt. You know? Um it took a while to recover from that, but just the reputation piece. But man, you have employees and you don't have the right insurances, you can talk to this dude, right? I just moved my workers' comp to him. I'm moving all my you know, all my business insurance. They can do business. 50 states of the union. Now, I, we don't sell on this call, but I'm just giving him my – I'm trusting him to take care of me, and that's what a good commercial insurance person does. They will cover your butt. And so um, if you're listening to the recording, man, get all to Alex. I highly endorse him. So, and, you're, and, and the thing I like about you, dude, is you're, like, responsive. You're like, <laughs> like – I'm like, hey, I don't want the start date on this until April 1, you know? All of a sudden, within like less than an hour, I got a new revised policy. I'm like, dude, that was like the – that's the fastest response I've ever gotten from a commercial insurance dude. So, yeah. All right, so we got your we got your, your lessons. We got your wins. Uh, did we get your wins, Carrie? What were your biggest wins in the first quarter? Uh, bringing on new partners. That was the biggest wins because I hadn't been doing that and bringing on new um, strategic alliances. Who's your most difficult client? Uh, never mind. Don't answer that question. <laughs> he's, on, he's on the call. <laughs> I will keep that reserved for myself, John. <laughs> All right. Here's, here's the thing I want to point out to you. We, my wife and I met with Carrie and her, her, uh, her team member. They were all of our stuff. They've been trying to connect with us for the last two weeks. Two and weeks. for whatever reason, we haven't been canceling. We haven't been able to connect. I don't know if it's a subconscious thing that if I meet with you, I'm going to have to change. 
Yeah, I'm sure. I, <laughs> probably I know what's going to happen for a lot of people. <laughs> probably part of it. Yeah. Yeah. And so, but we're going to make that happen. And um, and the thing is, she's doing beautifully, like we all need to do. It's like once somebody says they're interested, um, you follow. It's just like Alex. Follow up, 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 follow up until they buy or die. <laughs> you know? So there you go. Uh, Alan, yes, what sir. are you super fired up about? What's your biggest win and your biggest lesson this quarter? Biggest win was a series of small wins. You know, I was thinking about this before I met with our CFO today. And over this past quarter, we haven't had any massive victories to point to. And I was kind of, I was kind of looking at this and, and thinking, well, what, what am I taking away from the quarter? So I backed up and I looked at our CRM and I looked at all these little deals that we've had starting in January and realized that our close percentage on all these little deals was over 75%. And I'll take that all freaking day long. I, and John knows this, I had a, I had a business partner in another company that I had 50% of years ago, and he had another company as well. And one of his clients accounted for over 75% of that guy's revenue. And when he lost that client, um, it was, it was just devastating for him. Absolutely absolutely cut the legs out from under him. And I remember thinking at the time, you know, um, well, I have, I have this large client base of smaller clients and I'm so much better positioned, you know, in the event that, that something happens where a lot of people might look at canceling or, you know, in any case, it just wouldn't be as impactful. So I took that away and went into, you know, went into this meeting feeling a whole lot better about, everything that we had done this quarter. I mean, if you, if you run the, run the dollars for all those small deals, uh, it might as well be two or three nice ones. And so, you know, that comes back to the lesson, John, the lesson is mindset. And, you know, I'll, I'll, I'll tell the, I'll tell the extraordinary Cliff's Notes version of this story. I don't know if John's ever heard it, but in 1998, when I started my company up, I had a guy hire me to install a Garmin GPS system and connect it to his laptop because that's the only way they worked back then. And he wanted us to mount this laptop in his homemade helicopter that he had built for himself. You know, like this guy's freaking cool. He wanted the GPS mounted on a laptop in his helicopter. At the time, that guy, Kenny Anderson was his name. He was 92 years old. And he flew that helicopter to church once a week, about two miles, and then flew it back. He walked about 30 miles a week. Uh, we used to have long talks. He drank a gallon of distilled water a day. He just tackled life, man. He tackled life. And, and I asked him, like, where do you get this perspective? You know, he's like, oh, and he's like, I don't want to eat white bread either. And, you know, just... He'd say it kind of that grumpy old man tone, but he was always very happy. And he said, you know, basically I have a limited number of years left. Um, I'm seizing every day. And he said, I didn't always think this way, but I wish I had. And he said, it's never too late to start. Never too late to start. And he had all kinds of things in his way. His wife was a wheelchair bound invalid and he had to care for her you know, while he lived his life, he ordered a 32 inch monitor, CRT monitor for his computer because he was fascinated with computers, ordered it from Gateway. And the ponytail Gateway guy, Ted something, the guy that founded Gateway, called him up and thanked him for his purchase. Um, just an outstanding human being because of how he went about everything, every activity, everything that he did. He was a ham radio operator, you know, just just a spectacular human being. And, you know, I walked away uh, from knowing him and I've obviously carried that for over 20 years thinking, you know, this is a guy who like everybody else had adversity and at the same time 
seized on every single opportunity and even created some out of thin air to better himself and better his life and take what he did have practicing gratitude daily to make things better for himself. And it's all in how you look at things. It's, it, you know, when, when life throws you, uh, when life throws you lemons, oh gosh, I can't believe I'm saying this. You, you can make lemonade, you know, or you can just go sit in a corner and be pissed off about all the lemons you have sitting around in your room. So that's, that's, that's quarter one for me in a nutshell, John. Awesome. Awesome. Robbie. You're muted. There you go. <laughs> the sun is behind me in the windows. Uh, my name is Robbie with Bridge Coffee Company. We're a coffee roaster uh, and we also have a cafe here locally. Um, and yeah, there's roasters right behind me. I wanted to say that uh, Alex, while you're in that shipping yard, if you find my insulated cups, you can bring them this way. <laughs> I'm on it. All right. <laughs> I'll talk to customs. All right. What do you I have a guy? There you go. All right, Robbie, what are you fired up about? What's your biggest win for this first three months? And what's your biggest lesson? So fired up, I have a similar uh, similar situation to what Alex was actually talking about in uh, that financial freedom, not particularly retirement, but uh, having that financial freedom. And uh, I started my first business when I was 23 and set a goal right then uh, that I was gonna be financially free or retired by the time I was 40. Um, so that, that's a goal that keeps me motivated, uh, keeps me fired up. I want to go experience things with my kids when they get to the ages of, uh, having, uh, coming to the age of, uh, experiencing different things, you know, things that maybe I didn't have the experience to have. Um, so that's what fires me up and keeps me motivated. Uh, biggest win this quarter, I think was organization. Um, I'm not the most organized person. I'm really scatterbrained and kind of all over the place. So uh, spending a little bit of time to get focused on uh, getting things organized, it's fantastic to look at. I, I love seeing it now uh, and everything is finding its place. Um, let's see, biggest lesson. I wouldn't, I, I don't know about biggest, most recent lesson is a revisit to the book uh, Clockwork. And the chapter one of the book telling you that, you know, uh, productivity doesn't mean more time for more things. Uh, productivity is more efficient. Uh, so doing things more efficiently rather than doing more things. I've got, I've got a lot of spinning plates, as we say, um, with uh, two other businesses that I personally own and then the coffee company that I'm working for. Uh, so the organization piece and productivity, uh, being more efficient and not having more time for more things, uh, it, it's all been, it, it's hitting all at the right time. Awesome. That's awesome, man. Yeah. So I'm super fired up for you guys. And, uh, if you guys ever get a chance, uh, for those of you that are on the live call and listen to the recording, you got it. You got a taste. You got, you just got a taste bridge coffee copy, right? So. I went to my fridge yesterday, and um, and I go, hey, this this looks like a growler. Oh wait, that's bridge. <laughs> so that is that coffee in there? And she goes, she goes, yeah, that's coffee that's in the fridge, dude. I was, so I poured it over ice. I'm like, oh my god, this is good stuff. So, <laughs> I've been I've been drinking I've been I've been literally like beer, you know, drinking bridge. I, I got to slow down though at about probably three o'clock because it is addicting. <laughs> <laughs> it's good stuff but the one thing i will say man is like the words that came out of my wife when after she came back visiting you guys it's like she actually likes coffee i was like wow i never thought i'd ever hear that come out of your mouth but you guys completely <laughs> changed the way she looks at coffee and and i'm super excited to to watch you guys' growth so in yuba city we're expanding them into sacramento but definitely reach out to bridge because you guys ship everywhere so yeah, uh, anywhere in the U.S. Make a good product. Make a really good product. I really, really, Thank really you. love that. All right, guys. Well, hey, congratulations on ending the quarter. Everybody give themselves a round of applause. Yay! All right. Pat yourself on the back.
okay? All the lessons, all the stuff that you didn't go, just shake it off your shoulders. You got a clean slate now. Tomorrow's April 1st, and yes, it is April Fool's Day, so you can either get started tomorrow or tell yourself you're going to and then play an April Fool's joke on yourself. But, um, you know, I'm excited to hear uh, what you guys got going on. Next Thursday, uh, Alan and I decided to push off our uh, webinar until next Thursday. So we're going to do a special edition of this call next Thursday, 4 p.m. We're going to teach some really, really good stuff. We've been working on the slide decks. I think you guys are going to get a lot out of it. I'm personally going to go in deep, deep, deep into uh, because it's 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 first month. I'm going to go into referral systems like in a very deep way, okay? And Alan's going to go into cybersecurity and some some exciting stuff he has there because this world is getting a whole lot more dangerous. And he's going to be talking about how you how do you protect yourself. And so, highly recommend you be there. You'll see a lot of the marketing stuff come out on that. Uh, please share it everywhere. And uh, look forward to uh, seeing you guys next Thursday. Enjoy the last evening of the quarter. Celebrate. Getting ready to take the family out. Just celebrate all your wins. Celebrate being alive. You know, it's all good. Go out and make it happen. Have a great day. Talk to you guys later. Thanks, everyone. Thanks, John. See you.